What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. We got an update on that story we did on last segment about the Hessian who got uh, 45 to life, his parole hearing. So, yes, we got that. We also have something very despicable, man. Uh, everybody knows about the Thin Blue Line uh, Motorcycle Club. Three members uh, were killed right away, and then another one passed away a couple weeks later. Well, anyway, to cover up their mistakes, yes, the guy who killed everybody should have been kicked out of this country. But no, they go after the store clerk. Yes, they arrested the store clerk. And blamed her for selling the alcohol. Can you believe this? Because of their screw up. Also, we're going to go all the way out to Portland, baby. Yeah, I guess it's getting too bad out there, man. They're finally coming out and saying, hey, wait, whoa, whoa. This ain't peaceful protesting. Hey, I thought everything was peaceful uh, protesting, according to the left. Wait till you see this one. I guess they barricaded a bunch of people in uh, the building and stuff. Yeah, sad state of affairs. Do you notice how you do not hear about old boy anymore from Minneapolis since that uh, body cam footage came out? The whole thing. Everybody running, baby. Everybody running now. (laughs) I don't think they're going to be convicted. Not after seeing that body cam uh, yeah, you know, again, you know, them trying to spin stuff, cause all kinds of, you know, hectic. And, uh, you know, this whole country started going up in flames because of them. That just shows you the mainstream media and how they can, uh, you know, persuade people to act like dummies. Lux, if you ask me. I just got done filming uh, a moto vlog today it will be going out sunday morning at eight o'clock you know i figure you know you know i promised everybody i answer some questions once a month so you know that's what i did and i figured instead of being in the studio it was a beautiful day in northern illinois so i said okay let's get out there and just ride 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 and that's exactly what i did today i put some miles on you know it's always awesome just jumping on the bike and going just jumping on the bike and going (laughs) so that will be coming out uh sunday you know i got a very interesting question uh earlier today and everybody asked well you know why you do your moto vlogs you know you don't do it like everybody else uh you know why don't you have people riding with you because most of the people i know don't want to be on camera you dummies (laughs) you know everybody has to understand you know creators they got their personal life and then they got the business so i don't you know my personal life's my personal life and that's just the way it freaking is and another question that i'll be answering uh in the moto vlog you know it was a very weird one if you ask me uh they were talking about uh prison uh, gangs coming out in the clubs on the street so yeah i have an answer for that one and i also got an answer for one of the uh followers or trolls whatever he is he's probably the one you know before the video even gets going the segment they you know like dislike it he's probably one of them freaking morons uh that were commenting on the one thing we did about the philly uh warlocks and uh, it's chester so don't you know what there's two philly warlocks out in philadelphia you can't get it uh confused one's the harpies the other are the true phillies and that club's had some problems, man. That Chester one, anyway, uh, with Donna Morelli. She's running the show. Yeah, a woman with a 1% or one. But they were wondering why I came so hard on that club with this Keith Palumbo stuff. And what I have to say is if you try to profess brotherhood, you're sure to hell don't shoot your brother in the face. Just saying. There's a lot of stuff on that uh, case still coming up. And, again, we're going to be following it uh, to the very end. So, all you haters, you can kiss my ass. We're going to keep on going on it. Let the hate come, baby. Let it come. That's what I have to say. So, let's get to some interesting biker news today. You're not going to like what I've seen with the. You know, I cannot believe they arrested the store clerk because of their screw-up. 
is a follow-up uh, from the story we did on the last segment. OCregister.com uh, State Board denied the parole for biker turn lawyer convicted of killing three in Westminster decades ago. He's going to have to wait another five years before he is eligible for release again. That by then will be 80 years old. Uh, convicted tripodal uh, murderer. Wow. Tom uh, Maniscola was denied pro Thursday, August 6th in a video hearing from Mule Creek State Prison. Maniscola, 20 or 75, will not have another parole hearing for five years, although sentenced uh, to 46 years to life. He became eligible for early release under a program aimed at easing prison crowding by considering parole for inmates 60 and older. A biker turned lawyer, Maniscalco, man, that's a word right there, was convicted in 94 in the murders of Richard Rabbit Rizzoni, 35, at his ranch home in Westminster in 1980, as well as Rena Arlene Miley, 19, and Rizzoni's friend, Thomas Bernard Mohan, 28. All bodies were found several days later. Uh, they were one-time leaders in the Hessians Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, which was founded in Orange County in the late 1960s. A lot of people were like, damn, Hessians, that's old school right there, man, the Hessians. Uh, tough, uh, tough club. Uh, they usually just stuck around to the local area. They never got into all that expansion stuff. But yeah, man, that's an old name from the old times. The three victims had been shot multiple times at close range, execution style. Miley, the daughter of a Los Alamitos police captain, oh, right there, yeah, that was not the smartest thing to do, was found on her back naked and raped. Uh, according to the records, he's believed uh, Rizzoni was ripping him off in his counterfeiting and meth distribution ring. Also participating in the slain was fellow Hessian Daniel Shame Duffy, who was convicted of special circumstances murder and is serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. Uh, his first trial started in 1990 and ended a year later with a hung jury. A second trial stretched nearly one and a half years. So again... Uh, follow up to that story, he was denied parole. And this is the one that really burns my balls right here. KSAT.com. The store clerk sold beer to DWI suspect before fatal Kerr County crash involving motorcycle club members. TABC says Rachel Diane Welch, 37, surrendered to law enforcement authorities. I truly believe she is a pawn. Now, let me get into this. The guy who did this was drunk, crossed over to uh, the center line, if, for those that don't know. I uh, killed uh, four guys now. Uh, they were with the Thin Blue Line uh, Motorcycle Club, which is a cop club. And I truly believe if this was any other club, this woman would not be arrested. But furthermore, furthermore, this guy had a history of criminal behavior which hey it, it happens criminal behavior nobody's you know saying anything to that but he was an illegal alien and they had chance after chance to get this guy out of there so this wouldn't happen and i believe that's why they are turning to the store clerk to pin it on her let's read Austin, Texas, a Hill County store clerk sold beer to an intoxicated 28-year-old man who crashed his vehicle into a group of motorcycle club members near Carryville, killing four of them, Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission officials said. Rachel Diane Welch, 37, of Center Point, turned herself in to the Kerr County authorities Thursday, a news release said, Welch is charged with sale to a certain person which is punishable by up to a year in jail and a $1,000 fine. She was later released on a $2,000 bond. You Can you believe that? An American citizen is getting put be, uh, behind bars 
possibly up to a year and fined for selling this guy alcohol, the guy that our own government officials should have got out so this wouldn't have happened. Can anybody say Patsy? According to TABC officials, Welch was working at the a dollar general store in Centerpoint around noon on July 18th when she sold beer to Ivan Robles Nevaez of Center Point. Investigators believe uh, he was already intoxicated when Welch sold him the alcohol. One thing I don't understand, how is it, uh, you know, the personal responsibility of somebody selling the alcohol? How did they know if the guy's drunk? Do they got breathalyzers or something? I just feel for this girl, man. This is unreal. There's a picture of the schmuck right there. Moments after Robos Nahavis left the store, his vehicle crossed the center line on Highway 16. Oh, wait a second here. Wait, time out. Time out. If he left the store and moments later this happened, he didn't even touch the freaking alcohol that she sold him. So why are they charging her? Her actions didn't lead to this. See where it gets sticky here? If it's only moments later, his vehicle crossed the center line, hit in love and motorcycles, killing three riders at the scene. A uh, Texas Department of Public Safety official said a fourth rider died of his injury uh, several days later. So how does her actions any result to this? You want to know why? Because the ones that were killed were cops. And law enforcement, when that happens to one or their own, they're going to look to blame somebody but themselves. Go blame ICE. Go blame, uh, you know, immigration officials for this one. It wasn't this clerk's fault. State law prohibits the sale to any person who exhibits signs of intoxication at the time of sale. What are those signs? You know what? I know a lot of people can, you know, put some down and they don't look drunk. But their blood alcohol levels through the roof. What do you do in them cases? Well, this is an extremely tragic case which may have been avoided if this individual was prevented. They're laying the whole blame on her? From purchasing additional alcohol beverages prior to the crash. You know what? I really wish that uh, an NCOM lawyer or something like that would get involved in this case. Because of their past mistakes to cops, now they're going to blame it on this girl? You, uh, you know what? You're, you're not serious. Hey, guys, please call the Department or Texas Department of Public Safety. Now, her name, let's get her name here. Renell Diane Welch of Centerpoint. And start going after him. This should not have happened. Now they're blaming this lady for this accident when it was their fault. This is crazy. TABC will hold accountable all businesses and employees. Okay, are you going to hold accountable for this jackass being in this country illegally? who may have contributed to this case by illegally selling alcohol. We're grateful for the support of the Department of Public Safety, whose investigators were instrumental in assisting TABC agents in identifying the source of the alcohol in this case. Well, wait a second. That don't make no sense. You just said that she sold them it, and then moments later... He was already intoxicated. It wasn't her. Please, everybody, call this place. Texas, uh, what is this called? Uh, what we got here? Texas Department of uh, Public Health is that one thing. And then uh, TABC, uh, the Texas Alcohol, uh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to find a number for you guys for that one. But we got a call on this. This is not, not cool. Unfreaking real. Horn of my final thoughts. Now, this is a funny article. Now, this ain't biker related. Well, maybe it is. But the powers that be believe 
Those who get their news on social media are less engaged and less acknowledgeable. Basically, you're stupid if you're getting your news from me or Black Dragon or somebody else or only on the internet where social media links. They're calling you dumb. Dummies. That's telling you something right here. What it's telling you is they're running scared, MSM. Let's just face it, their numbers are down in the dumps. Because social media influencers have taken over. See, we, we target niches. And there's all kinds of niches. People knowledgeable about this one subject, that one subject. So nobody goes to them anymore. The rise of social media has changed the information landscape in myriad ways, including the manner in which many Americans keep up with current events. In fact, social media is now among the most common pathways where people, particularly young adults, get their political news. Really. Isn't the uh, other day a uh, former MSNBC producer came out and said, these ain't even news stations anymore, and they openly admit it. They're just there to comfort people with their viewpoints. And people wonder why? They go to the niche news stations to get their news? Because it's based on facts, both sides of the story. There ain't jerking one person around over another. A new Pew Research Center analysis of surveys conducted between October 2019 and June 20 uh, finds that those who relay most on social media for political news stand apart from other news consumers in a number of ways. These U.S. adults, for instance, tend to be less likely than other news consumers to closely follow major news stories, such as the coronavirus outbreak. Funny, everybody on social media is talking about it, and all the creators talk about it. I even talk about it. In the 2020 presidential election, boy, I talk about that politics stuff. And, you know, I know a, a, a small group of the audience don't like that, but I'm trying to inform out there. But you make the decision. Basically, what I can say is, if you vote for dummy who can't freaking uh, remember his name, we're in trouble. Portland is going to be what you see all over the country with them. Uh, and perhaps tied to that, this group also tends to be less knowledgeable about these topics. <laughs> They're calling you dumb! Uh, thorough se uh, several surveys. You know what? I never get polled. And I never get a survey. Where do they find these people for their polls? You know, 900 uh, you know, people surveyed. Yeah, you get out of here. The Center's American News Pathways Project has been exploring the connection between American news habits and what they hear and perceive about current events. Well, another reason why they don't want to, you know, go to MSNBC, CNN, or whatever you're, you know, right-leaning, left-leaning... Is because there's too much propaganda. There's not enough news in there, not enough facts. It's all propaganda. So people are going to turn you off and go to somebody they trust. Morons. Uh, <laughs> as of last year, 18% uh, uh, percent of U.S. adults say they turn to mo most to social media for political and election news. That's lower than the share who uh, use news websites and apps but about par with the percent who say their primary pathway is cable television. 16, only 16%. 16%, 16 what is that telling you right there? Very interesting, very interesting. Now, this is another story I was talking about on the last segment about World War II. You know, USS Indianapolis finally got the highest congressional honor. And... I talked about students no longer want to learn about World War II because it upsets them. Could you imagine these twats back then trying to fight Hitler? Could you? 
A young Instagram influencer has an important message for all the teachers in America. Stop teaching youngsters about World War II. Because the Second World War involved the Nazis and concentration camps that killed millions of innocent people. A 22-year-old Instagram influencer thinks that it's too intense of a conflict to teach millennials. The snowflake argues that teaching young people about World War II would hit millennials' mental health and do damage to their collective psyche. My generation, Generation X, you're a bunch of, oh, bunch of freaking schlucks, myself included. What in a, well, I can't say mine, you know, me, because I raised my kids right. But, you know, how the hell did we raise a bunch of freaking pansies? You want to learn about history so it don't repeat itself. Because the young man appeared on television to share his controversial view about education in World War II, he was met with a lot of resistance, but that's what 22-year-old reality television star Freddie Bentley wanted to have happen when he went on Good Morning Britain. He argued that schools across Great Britain need to go easier on their young population and stop teaching them about the deadly conflict, oh my god, that thrusts Europe into violent war. Uh, Nicola Blakeman, this made me so angry without people fighting that war, then idiots like this kid wouldn't have the right to do what or be who they want. They fought for our freedom, so learn about it, you Cretan. I love it. Thank you, Nicola. I love you. <laughs> uh, quote it was a hard situation World War II I don't want anyone to think I'm being disrespectful you are you jackass Bentley said I remember learning it as a child thinking oh my god it's so intense well you were in Britain so you're lucky that the RAF defeated the Luftwaffe you're lucky because that was a pretense to invasion of the English shore and you'd be speaking German right now you idiot you want to know what it'd be like? Uh, I think Amazon has a, uh, a series on this where there's an, uh, a man on, the, on High Castle or something, I think it's called, where it shows you an alternate reality of what would happen if they would have won. Maybe this schluck should uh, look at it. Because Bentley is a popular figure among young people and social media addicts, he managed to reach a lot of people. Many people on Twitter attacked Bentley's comments on Twitter. One person write in, You need to learn respect, young man. You're damn right. Other people shared similar comments on Twitter about Bentley's comments that the heroic victory of the Allies who vanquished the Nazis and how teachers need to go, quote, easy on kids who are desperate to learn that stuff. Quote, Are you having a laugh, one person wrote? Not talking about the war in school, not educating them on what went wrong so it doesn't happen again. <laughs> yes, this is that generation, guys, and that's why this country and the rest of the countries around the world are in trouble. Let's go to Corey Graff's wall of shame, shall we? Off-duty NYPD cop charged with assaulting estranged wife. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's one of the crimes. An off-duty NYPD cop was arrested for assaulting his estranged wife on a Queen Street corner. Hmm. No, I'm just... No, I'm cool. During a, I could have said something. Uh, during an argument over child visitation rights, officers M.D. Rahman, you are now in the Hall of Fame, or Wall of Shame, my fault, is faced in misdemeanor assault charges for the Sunday afternoon confrontation near the Horace Harding Expressway and 108th Street in Corona. Corona. During the argument, Rahman allegedly punched his wife in the chest, knocking her to the ground. He then punched her in the head and shoulder, leaving her bruised, according to the police. When she went to the hospital near her home the next day, Police were called. The cops tracked down Rahman, taking him into custody. His arraignment was pending. Yes, an NYPD cop charged out of the Daily News. Now let's go to Portland. Now all of a sudden, 
They're condemning riots for attempting to commit murder. Wait till you hear this one. My gosh, my gosh. It's a mom and pop store to the big business owners, to faith leaders, all the way up to elected officials to really send the strong message that enough is enough. This is not uh, forwarding the goals no, that's of your, uh, uh, things marriage. that are going to lead to better outcomes for people of color. Um, this movement's very powerful, and I feel like the, the violence has taken away from it. This is not what Portland's about, and this is not sure what is. we need right now in our city. And here's a stat that supports his claim. A new poll, Gallup poll, shows 81% of black Americans want police to maintain or increase a presence in their communities. Juan, I'll go to you. Has hmm. this movement the on police five, reform man. been high? I love that show. Uh, anyway, uh, he confirmed our uh, evening condemned the actions of rioters who attempted to set fire. Yes, set fire to police precinct and block the exits while officers were inside. How do you liberal schmucks like yourself now? You're supporting this. Oh, but it's peaceful. Well, when you commit arson with an accelerant in an attempt to burn down a building that is occupied by people who you have intentionally trapped inside, you are not demonstrating. You are attempting to commit murder, Wheeler said in a news conference with Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle. Maybe it's time for the people to stand up. Do something about these punks. You know, these are the same punks that don't want to be taught World War II. Commie bastards. Don't think for a moment that you are, in, if you are participating in this activity, you are not being a prop for the re-election campaign of Donald Trump because you absolutely are. He said you are creating a B-roll film that will be used in ads naturally to help Donald Trump during his campaign if you don't want to be part of that, then don't show up. What's funny is, you you know what that cop said this? Now I'm pissed. He said that. Where are your leaders? They told you you can't use smoke grenades. You can't use rubber bullets. You can't do nothing but hold on to your peckers. But it's Donald Trump, right? Idiots. Hate the way liberals think. <laughs> a riot was declared Wednesday evening when agitators de uh, descended upon the Portland Police Bureau's East Precinct building, spray painted over security cameras, broke a glass door with a 2x4 little fire using an accelerant and threw fireworks and other objects. Why don't you just shoot one of them? They'll, they'll run like little pansies. The front doors of the precinct were barricaded before the fire was started with more than 20 officers. Yeah. <laughs> More than a final thoughts. Uh, let's go to this uh, next story here. It just kind of popped up. Uh, and this came up about an hour ago. Sturges rally roars ahead despite coronavirus concerns. Quote, I don't want to die, but I don't want to be cooped up all my life either, one visitor said. Uh, I guess that's pretty cool. <laughs> Crowds of motorcycle enthusiasts gathered in Sturgis, South Dakota Friday for the start of the 80th Sturgis Motorcycle Rally despite concerns over the coronavirus pandemic that has led to cancellations of other large-scale gatherings since the outbreak. The rally could become the largest gathering since the pandemic began. <laughs> Leave it to bikers, boy. We'll pave the way. Organizers were expecting 250,000 people from all over the country to make it a 10-day event. Many bikers were defiant over the restrictions that have altered daily life for most Americans. That's why they target, uh, you know, the hardcore bikers, because we're not being told what the... Quote, screw COVID, read the design of a t-shirt sold, I went to Sturges. For Arizona resident Stefan uh, Sample 66, who rode his bike to the event, the gathering is a break from the mostly homebound routine of the past several months. But, you know, God forbid you, 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 you know what, you can protest, but you can't do this. I don't want to die, but I don't want to be cooped up all my life either. Some of the crowd at Sturges is composed of retirees and people in the age range deemed most at risk to suffer complication from the virus. South Dakota has had an upward trend in COVID-19 cases. 
uh, they ain't telling you though about hmm, they're testing more too. That's why you can't believe anything the media says anymore. Uh, the seven day average was still only around 84 a day. Uh, Republican Governor Christy Nome, she's been doing awesome during this, has taken a largely hands off approach to the pandemic, avoiding a mask mandate and preaching personal responsibility. She supported holding the rally, rock and roll, man, pointing out that no virus outbreak was documented from the several thousand people who turned out to see President Donald Trump at the fireworks at the Mount Rushmore last year. Uh, then they talk about, you know, what they're trying to do to prevent it and all that stuff. Uh, hey, a resident, this is a huge foolish mistake to make the make to host the rally this year. Sturgeon resident Linnell Chapman, well, pound a pecker, told the... Uh, City councilors at a June meeting, the government of Sturgis needs to care for more. Uh, yeah, but you guys take the money, won't you? Mm -hmm. uh, other locals plan to stay home. Carol uh, Felliner said she brought groceries and planned to stay away from gatherings, saying the rally would be a death sentence for her husband, who suffers from kidney problems. There you go. That just popped up about an hour ago. Rock and roll. Let's go to my final thoughts, shall we? Who else is sick of this, man? It's a simple question. Who's sick of it? These white, ultra-rich liberals trying to tell you and I that we're garbage. That we're uneducated. We're not knowledgeable. Who's sick of it? And you know what? I think that is the main reason. The main reason. While a, and you know what? This freaking lifestyle is made of everybody. You know, all kinds of different subcultures. But it's like, you really support them type of people? There are bikers that support them. How? Why? They look at you like dog crap. Maybe it's because after you take all your, you know, nice little leathers off, you get off your motorcycle after taking it for a 25-mile ride... You get back into your business suit. Now, I'm not saying all people are like that, but I'm saying the majority that I know are. Maybe that's how they vote for them. You people are motorcycle enthusiasts and don't deserve the honor of being called a biker. Because I know a lot of people, myself, and a lot of other hardworking people live this life every single day. Day, every single day and that Sturges one just you know kind of upset me it's because you look at South Dakota the governor's been running that state perfectly through this whole thing she let people decide for themselves what to do personal responsibility that's just like everything in life is personal responsibility. But we have a generation, and we got a lot of people besides this younger generation who feel entitled. The government is supposed to provide for me. That's not what this country's about. You talk about the American dream, you got to go out there and get the American dream. Not sit on your ass collecting welfare. Yeah, I get it. Some people need a hand up. But most people make a living on that. A living on it. On you and my dime. And guess what? They'll play the system. Play the system. But they get then they get to where... Well, I deserve this. Why? It's just like that one story where that broad had like eight, nine kids. And said it was our responsibility to pay for them. And then they wonder why they're sitting in the ghetto. That's the life you choose. And you have nobody else to blame but yourself. It ain't my fault. It ain't other people's fault that listen to this show. It's yours. Because you're lazy. It's because you do not want to change the way you are doing something. How is your situation anybody else's fault? Now, you can believe 
these leftist liberals said, hey, white privilege, white privilege, my ass. My ass. You get sick of hearing it. There's a lot of white people friggin' hurting right now. A lot. And you know what's funny? It was a kick in the balls to uh, the NFL, the NBA, NASCAR. I'll never watch again. I'm a huge racing fan. Uh, and some other sports. You come out with that woke shit, you're going broke. It's funny. Ratings for the NBA and NASCAR are down the tube. And you wonder why? Because people are tired of it. A lot of people have seen that video that started this all. And guess what? I don't think those cops are going to get convicted. Dude was doing the crap. Dude asked them to put him down. Dude was saying I couldn't breathe while I was in the car. But see, the media only chops it up. And that's what creates all this havoc. So yeah, the way I think might be a little different. It might be too hard for your snowflakes who don't want to learn about World War II, the greatest generation out there. But I believe in being real. If you want to change your situation, all you're the only one that can do it. So stop crying about it. And do something. That one story where that clerk was charged. I cannot believe that. They are pinning that whole thing on that lady. A lady that is only making probably minimum wage trying to support her family, herself. While you got others out there on public aid. Or you have this illegal out there that should have been shipped back. But no. They want to go after her because of their mistakes. That's one of the things I can't stand about law enforcement. Yeah, you want to get to the bottom. You want to go all the way out and do what you got to do to get uh, vengeance, as I call it. Because they hurt one of yours. Let's not mention the fact you would never do this if it was somebody else. But hey, let's look at uh, the problem here. You had ICE. You had immigration. That could have got rid of this guy. That's the reason this happened. And then uh, mentioning the article moments later. How is it her fault if it was moments later? And most of it, how can you even put that on somebody to know if they're drunk or not? Again, I know a lot of people, if they're fall down drunk, yeah, somebody's going to notice. But there's a lot of people that can hide that crap real good. Like I said, there is tons of way of doing it. People won't even know that you're, you're wasted. So I think that was one of the biggest BS stories of 2020 as of today. Was arresting that lady. Now she faces a year in jail for something you guys should have prevented? That's why I hope to God people call this Texas Alcohol Bureau. And say, hey, wait a second here. Get your facts straight. God knows the media ain't going to do it. The media won't do nothing, man. The media is nothing but left-right propaganda machines. That's the new, there is no news anymore. That's why everybody's going to uh, influencers. Let's look at Biker News, for example. You got HotCars.com. Always talking their crap. About how to do this, or why this, why to stay away from this. You can tell all they're doing is getting their paragraphs, or copy and pasting from other articles. And making it their own. They have no facts in there. None whatsoever. And then, when a club gets busted, and by the way, I get it. There's been a lot of HA stuff in the news. That's because it's in the news. You know, not a lot of other clubs are in there right now. Hopefully that answers your question on why we're doing so much HA stuff. They're the only ones in the damn news. But MSM don't give clubs an opportunity to present their side of the story. 
because they want to sensationalize the story to get clicks. I don't know if you guys notice, newspapers are like a thing of the past. It's all become internet based. That's why if you got a pop up blocker or something, it won't let you read the story unless you turn that off because they need to make revenue. So, what better way to make revenue? Sensationalize a story. And who gets caught up in that? Motorcycle clubs. A few members do some stupid crap, get caught, and next thing you know, it's the whole club's freaking problem. How is that even fair? And then you wonder why people are going to social media? You know, only 16%, you know, we read that article, 16% now go to television for their news. Because people are sick and tired of it. Sick and t- I think it was 80% in a poll that says people don't trust the media. And they're the ones responsible for what's going on in this country. I, you know what? These people that go to journalism school or even our kids. They're being destroyed by this liberal ideology. Come on, an influencer came out and said not to be taught World War II because it scares him? He's a pecker puller. You know what? Hashtag pecker puller, man. That's my next thing. Because it is sickening, man. Just think if these were the ones that had a fight on Omaha or at the Battle of the Bulge or Iwo Jima or North Africa. Could you imagine what would have happened? Or had a fight at the, you know, on the seas, man, on destroyers, on freaking frigates and carriers, while there's planes flying into them on suicide missions. I am scared for this country and the country's military for the future. Because now they're getting a batch of freaking tree huggers in there. Tree huggers that think just like this kid. Let me know what you guys think, man. You know what? It just gets sickening. That's why I want to put a little different, you know, news in there. Yeah, I'm always covering biker news. That's always in our program. But there's other things that bikers need to be aware of. We're going to try to present both sides of the story. That's what we always do, but it's up to you to make that choice. Don't forget to visit us over on Spotify. Look for that moto vlog coming out on Sunday. I think you'll enjoy it, man. A lot of uh, interesting questions. With that, I will talk to you later. Have a good one, boys and girls. I say goodbye. See you later. Vamos. Rock and roll. Ciao. So long. Pound rock on, baby. Yeah. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The Rock On hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock On. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on. Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel top of the notch all the baggers bikers and brotherhood and ladies don't you worry we didn't forget about you check it out at beggars syndicate cycles.com show show is now available on spotify and all major platforms including ir radio itunes stitcher and more don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode 
Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!